The 2021 high school football season kicks off tonight as the Eagles of Utica Eisenhower High School come to Dragon Stadium to take on the Lake Orion Dragons. Pre-game is underwritten by Malash's Palace, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. The Malash family has been providing automotive services to the Lake or Orion area since the 1950s. Visit them at 3800 South Lapeer Road or give them a call at 248-393-2222. Good evening, everyone. I'm Doug Corliss, joined again by Chris Fritching. Glad to be back for the 2021 season. Chris, last year was such a crazy year. Everybody's trying to return to normal, but still, you got to have precautions in place. Absolutely. You know, what is normal anymore uh, in these times that we're in? You know, Oakland County came out last week and, and said that masks are required within the schools. Um, as you said, protocols are changing, seem day to day, week to week. Um, you know, even last night, Manistee County, I'm sorry, uh, Mason County Central, excuse me, in Manistee, a game that was supposed to be played tonight was canceled due to COVID-19. So, yes, you're right. The, pre the precautions have got to continue to take place. My hope is that simply we can get to a point where we don't have to worry about this anymore. The student athletes can go out and play. The coaches can go out and coach. The fans and the community can come back and cheer in their team on and really get back to a, a sense of community, a sense of togetherness that uh, high school sports brings to communities all around the state. The Dragons come in tonight and it's the old saying, you're gonna need a scorecard to tell who's who. Not only is there a turnover in personnel, as there always is with graduation, but there is only one returning coach on the offensive side of the ball, and that's Coach Jennings. Mike Powell takes over as the offensive coordinator, and his offense has been described as a, a hybrid wing tee, a downhill gap, and as Coach Powell said, he calls it wings and things. Yeah, it's a new offensive staff, it's a new offensive system. Hopefully one that is high school enough to, to be able to provide and take advantage of the strengths that the Lake Orion team uh, has. That offensive line, the tailbacks, the halfbacks, and really the leadership of quarterback Kyler Carson. Um, the ability to get that offense doing what they do well and doing what they do very fast, that's really important. So the ability to, to get to a point where you're not focusing defensively, you're not focusing on one player, you're going to see multiple players touch that football. You're going to see multiple players in different positions and different formations uh, get the ball. And so you can't focus on one particular player. That's what's, what's going to make it fun for us as, as fans to watch because it's a multiple uh, person uh, uh, offense. Multiple players are going to be able to put points up on the board. That's what makes it exciting, and that's what makes it fun to watch. Uh, we'll need to watch their progression over the course of, of the season. Utica Eisenhower comes in tonight talking with Coach uh, Chris Smith before the game. They had a down year last year. They were two and five. And even though he says they're very young and he brought up their youth on offense and a lot of, un a lot of underclassmen in, it, they still think, he still thinks they can compete in a very tough Mac Red. They're young, yeah, they're down year last year, two and five. Uh, they're very young, they got a lot of sophomores up, as, as you said. Uh, he's really relying on that junior class, which has a lot of speed, a, a very athletic, but they're just unproven on the field as of yet. And so it's gonna be interesting to see for him, C Coach Smith, that uh, junior class step up and how they're gonna progress this year. Uh, but you're right, you, you, but as I'm looking at, at the Eagles roster, I'm sorry, schedule, I said to myself, they don't even play in the OAA Red. Obviously, they're here tonight and playing, opening up against Lake Orion. But they, week nine, they go and play against West Bloomfield, the defending one state champions. And oh, by the way, you, you put that in the middle of a brutal five-game MAC Red schedule. Uh, Macomb, Dakota, Chippewa Valley, Sterling Heights, Stevenson, uh, Romeo, and Gross Point South. And it's, it's teams like that that they've got to get off on the right foot here tonight if they want to have and set the tone for their, their success this upcoming season. It is so
so great to be back for the 2021 season. I hope you're as excited as we are. Stay with us. ONTV invites filmmakers of all ages to take part in the annual Wildwood Film Festival. Kickoff is on Thursday, October 7th at 6 p.m. Filmmakers have five days to plan, shoot, and edit a short film that will be critiqued by a panel of judges and shown on the big screen at the Oxford 7 Theater on October 13th. Cost is $50 per team, which goes toward prize money and a portion of which will benefit Lake Orion High School's SOS program. For more information, give Owen TV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. for freedom, freedom of diversity, and our responsibility to promote respect and equality for all. Let us be united in those efforts today as we join together in the singing of our national anthem. The national anthem has been played. The teams are out on the field. Chris, it's time to get started. It's hard to believe it's here. Can you believe it? Yeah, it's it's been a, a long off season. Uh, hey, let's let's tee it up. Our officiating crew for tonight, Calvin Terhar is the referee. Brian Wozni is the umpire. Gordon Gash is the headlinesman. Dennis Streckert is the line judge. Matt Newcomb is the back judge. Mark Emmendoffer is the field judge. And Brandon Gash is the side judge. It's a Genesee County crew here tonight. These teams have played nine times. But before I get into that, Chris, you've got your keys to the game. Yeah, you're right. I, keys to the game are simply... New offenses for both sides. Both individuals have offensive coordinators, Mike Powell for the Lake Orion Dragons and Joe Youngblood for the Utica Eisenhower Ball Club. Um, that's going to be different. Which offense has been uh, installed properly, uh, complete, and so forth? The second thing is what's so special about special teams? Making sure that uh, special teams oftentimes doesn't get the, the, uh, the work early on in, in practice uh, that... Uh, the offensive defense do so special teams is going to be a big factor and i think the biggest factor of all this is a hot week it is w weather is going to be a big factor in tonight's game it is in the high 80s with humidity uh talking with one of the trainers before and he had this neat little chart that figured out the heat index and he said it's about 99 with the heat index so number one steve brown is back deep for the dragons he he takes the kickoff up over the 10, jammed up at the 15, trying to break it outside, reverses his field, and he's going to be dropped at the 5. Tried to make something out of nothing, and something just wasn't there. 
Nice contain by the Eagles, led by Ryan Polisi, number 21, on the stop. So Eagles did a nice job of swarming Brown. You don't, you don't want to kick to Brown because Brown's one of the fastest kids in the state. We'll talk about him tonight and all season long. Yeah, he was a transfer from Grand Blank, and uh, boy, they like his speed. He splits out to the left. We'll get a look at the new Dragon offense. Kyler Carson's a quarterback. He gets back into kind of a pistol formation. Naslar Dell is the tailback. He gets the carry. I don't think that is Nars. Who is that? Number 25, Jake McCoy on the carry. Polisi on the stop once again. He made the tackle uh, amongst others on the kickoff and makes the first tackle, the first play of the game. And that's so, so much. Once you get that first hit out of the way, the nerves are gone. Two wides. Steve Brown on the handoff. He gets up over the 10 to about the 13. And we have a flag down. First flag of the season. Cardamone on the stop for the Eagles. You saw the flow as Brown came in motion. You saw the quick flow by the Eagles defense. Did a nice job of keeping them for a couple yard gain. It's a procedure call against the Dragons. So that'll come back five. The ball will be marked on the seven. Oh, no, they marked it back on the six. They'll repeat second down, call it second and 10, the way the stakes are, the, uh, the stakes are set up. Handoff up the middle. Jake McCoy again on the carry. He's up over the 10 to about the 12 or the 13. It'll bring up third down and three. Nice uh, run off tackle by that uh, nice hole opened up by that Lake Orion offensive line. Look, we're going to be talking about them all season long. A lot of experience returning for the Dragons. Naz Lardell and C.J. Witt are in. Witt's in the backfield. Nardell set up on a wing right on third down. Witt in motion. Kyler takes a snap. Back, looks. Throws on the right side toward Nardell. Little high and incomplete. That's a long throw by Carson and, and you know, Nardell's over in that flat area and he's looking into the sun too. And so not only was the ball thrown high, but uh, the sun was there as well, but the Eagles were there. Uh, they would have made the play anyway had the ball been caught. It's that time of year. Zach Jones is the punter. He's lined up in his end zone. Back deep is number one, Aiden Ives for Eisenhower. Good job getting it away. Fair catch called and taken on the 40 of Lake Orion. So the Eagles will take over first and 10 with good field position. Today's game is a copyrighted presentation of Lake Orion High School's Dragon Broadcasting Program and Orion Neighborhood Television. A couple of years ago, the LOHS Broadcast Program was awarded the title of Best Overall Program in the Country. We brought you over 80 live sporting events and plan to match that again this year. Plus, you can catch our award-winning daily live newscast, LOAM. Tune in at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. First and 10 for the Eagles. They come out trips right, single wide left, one back in the backfield. Preston Crum is the quarterback. Now they set up on a double wing. Hand off to number three, Frank Asta. 
Number one, Aiden Ives, I'm sorry. He turns the corner and gets up over the 45 to the 46. We talked about it briefly the pregame. Both offensive coordinators are brand new for both programs. Joe Youngblood is the offensive coordinator for the Eagles. Uh, he's got, uh, he was a player there at Eisenhower. He got his number retired, number 17. So he played at CMU and he's gonna be here uh, leading the Eagles this year and beyond. Trips to the left, single wide right. Single back in the backfield. Rum turns, throws. Got Ives, and he's got, he's Rum close to a first eight. down yeah. at the 30. They're going to call it Rolling third down four. and a yard. Or a half yard. Crum, their quarterback, is a sophomore, so yeah, he, he played last year as a freshman, but they, because there are so few games last year, uh, you know, he doesn't have a lot of experience under his belt. But he's got good size. The, the roster doesn't show the size uh, of the kid, but look, he's got some good size. You can tell from here. Double wide, double wing, and double down. Double down. Trying to see who, who, was, who did he say the jo ball? Joey, Joey Thede with the play. And Joey Thede Four with the down. stop. It's fourth down and a long one, and Eisenhower's going for it. Double wide, double wing. Ives is the slot back, he's in motion. Handoff number 27, he didn't make it. Dan Salkowski on the run, and he didn't make it. No, it sure. Naz Lardell. Yeah, it sure looked like it from here. Off tackle was open. All of a sudden, Lardell comes in, makes a play, trips him up. Lake Orion takes over on downs. So the Dragons take over first and 10. Kyler leads him out. Nas Lardell will be in the backfield. Dorian Hill split left. Double wing. Motion this side. Taken by number seven, Donovan Blackwell breaks a tackle. Up to the 40, up number four. Jack Wellman. First game jitters for me too. Jitters, you're a seasoned veteran. Ah, yeah, well. You know, seasoned veteran, uh, but nice play by the Dragons. A big gain of nine for Jack Seven Wellman. The quickness and the speed that Lake Orion likes the, the, from their skill position, guys. We're going to see a lot of that. We've already seen multiple guys carrying a football. This like we talked yep. about in pregame. Number 17, Billy Robertson is the back. He gets a handoff. He's up the middle over midfield into Eisenhower territory. That was some speed. Yeah, he hit the hole quick, Roberson did. Hit the hole quick in that little trap and a big first down. First time the ball's over midfield in this game for the Dragons. We'll let you know the first quarter of action is underwritten by Paul's Carpet Shine. The privately owned and operated company provides residential and cleaning services for the Orient area. For more information, give them a call at 248-568-9264. And we'll give them the web website after this play. Roberson again, gain of about three down to the 46. It'll bring up second down. I know we're up here in the box, but uh, we talked about weather being a factor. They're, both teams are gonna have to really focus on substitutions substitutions, making sure the kids are hydrated, obviously, properly, and so forth. Uh, this is where depth, even early on in the season, is a big factor in this game. Single wide, double wing, motion. Kyler on the keeper, cutting around the right side. He's got a first down and more, down to about the 32-yard line. And Chris, you notice that the Eisenhower defense all caved in at the center of the line, and he had the right side open. Yeah, because he, Roberson has had success up in the middle, and they, 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 they keyed in on him. Kyler kept it around the edge. Great block on the edge by number 10, Dorian Hill, to spring Kyler Carson for a bigger gain. 
First and 10 for the Dragons from the 32. 7.08 to go here in the first. No score. One wide, double wing, single back in the backfield. Now motion this side, taken again by Jack Wellman. He gets maybe a yard to the 31. By the way, Paul's Carpet Shine, you can visit their website at paulscarpetshine.com. Second and nine. Single wide right. Joey Debrinkett splits a little bit at the, from his tight end position. Roberson again down to the 21. He's got a first down for the Dragons. Roberson hitting that hole quick once again. And I, you can see it right here. Look at the down block. Boom, there's the hole right in there. Keep his, look at that body lean, that leg drive. All right, Roberson, first down, Dragons. He takes a breather. Naz Lardell comes in at the tailback position. This offense is going to run predominantly out of the pistol or the gun. Lardell on a handoff, breaks a tackle, gets inside the 20 down to the 19. That's kind of a thunder and lightning with the thick bodied Lardell. And Roberson, who's kind of the lightning guy. Inside, outside, threats. Trips to the left. Debrinkett set up on a wing right. Toss over. First down, number 22, C.J. Witt. Down to the 10, it'll be first and goal. Raymond Payne and Jack Wellman on the edge helps set that play up. Nice block. To allow that gain of nine. Seven, excuse me, seven. I can't do my math. That's another thing I gotta get better at, math. Stephen Brown comes in in a slot position. They have trips right to brink it on a wing left. Toss back to C.J. Witt. Gets maybe a yard. I'll tell you what, uh, Lake Orion's going to have to account for number 48, Dominic Ferraro. He's been in on three of the last four plays uh, making tackles, and so... It was not a first down on the previous play, and it is now. First and goal for the Dragons. 4.30 to go here in the first. Dragons knocking on the door. Naslar Dell is the back. Inside handoff. Steve Brown touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. Flag on the play on the we far side. We have a flag. Yeah. I think this is going to be called back on a procedure call. So that'll bring it back five illegal formation. And it'll be first and goal from the 15. It'll bring it back five, but also take six off the board. It does take six off the board. And this is all part of it, and Coach Blackstock touched on it. It's learning a new offense. You can see all the, the misdirection, the counters, the different people getting the ball. It's, it's, uh, it's to work on that. You know, Kyler Carson in the, pre, in the preseason talked about, uh, preview, talked about, the installation of this offense, and they got to it fairly early this year, and he felt that was really good for them. But that installation has got to continue to work, play in, or week in, week out in practice. Uh, they're going to always refine it each and every week. And so uh, we're going to this. Naslar Dell takes it right up the middle, banging heads. That's just power. 
Down to the six. It'll be second down and goal. It's power and it's good vision. You gotta be able to stick that foot in the ground and be able to take it north towards the end zone. Kyler on the toss back this to is Stephen where... Brown. Trying to cut it out in. Touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. He got it anyhow. That was speed, that was will, that was effort. Welcome to Lake Orion, Stephen Brown. How about that? How about that? It was individual, it wasn't gonna be denied there. CJ Witt on for the extra point. Ball's down, kick is up, and the kick is no good. Wide to the left, 3.31 to go. Here in the first, Dragons lead six to nothing. Thanks to Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Broadcasting, you can watch Lake Orion High School sports live online all year. We've got a full schedule of varsity football, volleyball, and more this fall, plus concerts and ceremonies. It costs less than $11 per month to watch sporting events, and half of that money goes back to the Lake Orion High School program. Be sure to designate Lake Orion High School when you set up your account. Get started at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. Orion Neighborhood Television thanks our student crews for their hard work and dedication to bring Dragon Sports to the world. And I'll tell you what, the world, the world just saw a good drive by the Dragons and the definition, as you said, of will by Stephen Brown. You can see it here once he gets the edge there. How he stays in, great camera work, great touchdown. Joe Johnson. On the spot as always. You know, one of the things the officials are doing right now, we're not in an NFL game where this is a TV timeout. They're actually taking time to allow the kids to rehydrate, take a break while it being so hot out here. So uh, smart decision by the officials. Uh, obviously, they're going to be doing that all night long. And health and safety of these kids is, and coaches, for that matter, is, is first and foremost. So Speaking with the trainers before the game, and we have a, a trainer on loan to us from Beaumont, uh, forgot it, Gary, and I forgot his last name, but he said that they were telling the players, as we used to, start hydrating about four days before the game. Drink as much water as you can. So Jake Lee, number 15, will kick off. Low line drive kick, hits at the 10, and goes out at the seven. That'll be a procedure call, and Eisenhower will take over first and 10 at the 35, 30, 30 yard line. This is, yeah, at the 30. And the 35. I like the uh, official being mic'd up tonight. It's a first for Lake Orion. Crumb from the gun. Throws out this side to number four, Ethan Barker. He gets about Five, they're calling it three up to the 38. Barker, and Mark back to the 37. Excuse me, Doug. Barker's a kid that they're going to go to quite a bit. He's been a, a good four, a three year uh, wide receiver for the Eagles. Uh, nice play by Andrew Horton there to funnel him back into the sideline and make the play and make the tackle. Second and eight. From back, looks, throws. Caught and dropped. Ethan Strand right there to bring him down. 
Yeah, third year on the varsity, a key returner on defense. Great play. They're trying to clear out the defense, the secondary with the, with the verticals. They try to run that little screen underneath. Nice read by Ethan Strand. Make up, bring up a big third down play. Third and six for the Eagles. Ball's on the right hash. Twins right, single wide left. Crumb, rolling, looking. Joey Thieves chasing him. Is it a catch? It is. Late signal from the official. Completed to Aiden Ives, number one. First down in Lake Orion Territory. That was nice timing between Crum and Ives in that situation because Ives just did a nice job of just settling down into the void, into the zone, and Crum was able to find him, throw it up and over the top and in front of the, the safety to be able to make that first down. Well, well executed. Four wides in motion this side. Crum back. Tight Looks. end, Going tight end. Deep. Got a receiver. Number 32. <laughs> Bennett Cardamone got behind the secondary and hauled it in at the 20-yard line for a first down. Yeah, you could see that happen up here. Cardamone just released from the line of scrimmage. It wasn't jammed at all, and he got behind Corbin Smith, and right away, once he got past Smith, he put his hand up, and Crum did a nice job of finding him for a big gain down to the 20-yard line. First and 10 from the 20. We've got some reads to catch up on. We'll do it when we can. Crum from the pistol, handoff up the middle, number 27, Dan Salkowski, after a gain of about two, it'll bring up second and eight. Yeah, Patrick Rowland, number 18, came screaming in, I think tripped him up to, to force that two-yard gain, but uh, right now, Lake Orion's got a button down, if you will. Second down and eight. Eric P from it is, is the free safety. We have a flag. That'll back him up five. Our scoreboard for the first half is underwritten by Michigan United Credit Union, the full service financial institution serves everyone who resides, works, worships, or attends school in Michigan. Give them a call at 248-814-4000 or visit their website for more information. Second and 13 for Eisenhower. Crum again, looks, throws, got a receiver, slips a tackle, slips another tackle, is finally brought down by Caleb Jones. Shifty running by Cardamone. Yeah, nice, nice. Right here you can see Pacamara come up and oh. try to make the play, and he puts his head down, and he avoids. That was Ethan Barker. And Barker, Barker's able to avoid. Uh, you got to, it, it shows right there, you got to make sure you're, you see what you hit, right? Yeah, see and that, what you hit and wrap up. Yeah, and, and the head was down, that's why you didn't see it. First and goal from the five. Twins left, single wide right. Cardamone set up on a wing left. Crum on the carry, drop. Number 24, James Patterson. Number 24, James Patterson, Jr. Came, came over from his defensive line spot, cut in and dropped him. I'm sorry, from his linebacker spot. 30 seconds to go here in the first. The Eagles are driving, twins left, single wide right. Crum looks, throws, corner of the end zone. Touchdown for the Eagles. That was Cardam oh, number number 12, Hayden Bills. 
Crum did a nice job of throwing that ball away from Andrew Horton, throwing it on the back shoulder, the, the shoulder towards the, the far sideline. Did a nice job of throwing it there. Bills went up and caught it at the highest point. Six on the board for the Eagles. And he did a good job of getting separation, too. Cardamone is holding. Number 18, Julian Lee. Yes. In for the point after, which is down, up, and good. 19.6 seconds left here in the first. Eisenhower takes a 7-6 to six lead. Here, here you can see it here. He throws it to the back shoulder, and Bills does a nice job of going up and meeting its highest point just, in, just before Horton got there. Touchdown, Eagles. And this quarter is also underwritten by Jets Pizza. Jets Pizza with two convenient locations in the Orion area. Proud supporters of Orion Neighborhood Television since 2009. Visit them at JetsPizza.com. Well, Doug, after the first two series or first series by each team, which resulted in punts, the next two series by each team resulted in touchdowns. The difference is obviously special teams, right? Special teams. You touched on that in pregame. Dorian Hill and Stephen Brown drop back deep for the Dragons. Twenty-nine, number twenty-nine, Reese Willing, kickoff for the Eagles. Waiting for the official's whistle. He approaches. Short kick. Fair catch called. Excellent play. Good awareness by Philly Roberson. They saw Stephen Brown in action, and they decided they're not going to kick to him. I don't blame him. I, I don't, don't blame him either. No. But the guy that fair caught the ball is no slouch <laughs> either. Right, right. So the Dragons come out for their third possession. Isaiah Marv comes out at a wide receiver position. Dorian Hill stays in at the other receiver position. The wing backs are Pat Rowland, and I can't see who the other one is. Oh, at number four, Jack Wellman. And Lake Orion's going to call a timeout. Yeah, Joey DeBrinkett came in late, and I think they didn't have the right personnel in, so it, as a result, they, they had to call a timeout. Larry Buss and the crew at Jets Pizza, located at 1091 South Lapeer Road, have been a proud supporter of Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Athletics since 2009. Jets supplies catering for cast and crew. Thank you, Larry, for your continued support. Give them a call and order dinner tonight. 248-814-7559. So a pretty exciting quarter of action to start the season out for both teams. And we're not done with that quarter. We got 19.2 left <laughs> Yeah. to go here in the first. But no, it's. I'll tell you what, Doug, I, I wasn't here last year. And it's been two years now since I've been back at the Lake Orion for a football game. Uh, and it's, it's great to be back. Look at the people on the far side. Look at the people on the home side. The, the, the dozens and dozens of cheerleaders down here on the track. It's great to see. Hand off up the middle by Jake McCoy. And school hasn't even started yet. No, exactly. Exactly. Legal formation, and you know, these are growing pains. You're going to see this when you're installing a new offense. And that'll get straightened out. That'll be straightened out in practice next week. Especially this type of offense, it's all based on timing. Timing, you know, and, and uh, you know, we've seen that a couple times already, a couple penalties, false starts, legal formation. Um, as a coach, we always talk about that eats at you, right? But uh, you're right. First game, first quarter, 
uh, here the, of this, this brand new season, those things uh, typically are going to happen. Jonah Fix is the center. Handoff up the middle. C.J. Witt got the penalty yardage back and another four. It'll be second down and about six. A little counter there, and, and, and C.J. Witt is following his big guys up front, Daniel Babcock and Carlo Fortino. I'd follow those guys, too, uh, for a big game. Nice way to end the first quarter for the Dragons. We played one. The Eisenhower Eagles beat the Lake Orion Dragons 7-6. to six. Once again, replays are sponsored by Jets Pizza. Jets Pizza with two convenient locations in the Orion area. Proud supporters of ON TV since 2009. Guess what? You can also get and secure DVD copies. You can purchase those by calling ON TV at 248 393 1060. And for only $10, you can get a copy of not only this game, but any game or program in our broadcast vault. Again, DVD copies, 248-393-1060. It's very clear when you come to Dragon Stadium that you know you are at Lake Orion High School. Look at our vantage point. No question. <laughs> yes. I have maintained for years it's the best view in the state. Well, then you look out across the way, too, and you see Lake Orion High School, home of the Dragons, and the soccer field over there, and it's a beautiful sight to see. Double wing, single back in the backfield. Nat Naslardell on the carry, bulls his way forward up to the 31. He might have a first down. Depends on the mark. And it is first down. Good yeah, hard running. Good hard uh, running. And, and again, you can get him off the field and you can bring in a guy like Roberson to, to, to run the next first play. So again, a lot of touch points for a, a lot of individuals on this offense allows uh, guys to play on both sides of the football. Roberson's the tailback now. Handoff to Wellman. Jack Wellman. Tripped up by Anil. He gets maybe two, Anil on the tackle. You have to be so and disciplined if you're the Eagles to be able to watch ball flow. You've got to be able to see, you see motion coming this way. You see the, the dive of the trap back up, up the middle. You see flow coming, countering back the other way. You've got to be so disciplined and you've got to be able to read your offensive keys if you're on defense. And we always talked about it playing a team that ran the wing tee. Tackle everything. Sure, absolutely. One wide out. Kyler back, got pressure, looks, throws, incomplete. There was not a receiver in the Carson area. Incomplete. He was pressured by I guess Lucy. Roberson was kind of in the, in the area. I saw Debrinkit a little bit, but he was almost five yards downfield. Yeah. But Kyler Carson did a nice job at least getting that away and, and Fortunate for the Dragons, there wasn't that, there wasn't that call. Nick Eaton checks in at a wing position. C.J. Witt is the running back, and Dorian Hill split right. Tyler back, got protection. He's going to run with it. He's got a first down. And you know why he's got a first down? Because of C.J. Witt on the far side of the field. Uh, all he did was have to do is screen that defender. He did that, and Carson was able to find just enough for that first down, down for the Dragons. First down at the 42. 10.38 to go here in the second quarter. Whip in the backfield.
He goes in motion right. Kyler's going to run it. He's down just shy of the 45. Straight run there. I just got to follow Fortino who pulled from the back side. And just, again, you, the offense is designed to take advantage of the strengths of this, this offensive line and the skill position kids. And so that's what you're seeing so far, trying to take advantage of those, utilizing those holes that the offensive lineman can produce. Trevor Witt is the right tackle. Jonah Fix now shifts to right guard. Oh, no, he's still the center. Handoff up the middle. Nas Lardell powers his way inside the 45 to the 40 and a first down. Good speed that time. Just bowled over people. Roberson comes in. I'm going to say it once again. In a night like tonight, when it's so warm, so humid, so sticky, it is so critical to be able to rotate personnel in, especially in that backfield. And you're seeing Lake Orion take advantage and do a nice job of just that. That's where the numbers you see on the sideline yep. are so key. The depth is so important. Building a program from freshman level on up or even younger on up is so key to the success of a program. Roberson breaks a tackle inside the 25, still on his feet and knocked out of bounds. They're calling him down about the 21. It'll be another first down for the Dragons. Great. And you can see this offense when it clicks. It's a beautiful thing. Great run by Roberson. Way to toe touch down the sideline there. And Eisenhower's going to take a timeout with 9.17 to go here in the second quarter, probably just to get their breath. I think you're right. Absolutely. They, they, you know, Lake Orion started this drive at the 21 yard line, their own 21 yard line, and Lake Orion is now just taking plays and getting yardage in chunks. And, uh, you know, they're dog tired uh, on the far side of the field. And I, I can't blame them. I don't, they're probably dog tired on this side of the field too, as warm as it is. I mean, that's the key. The, these kids, these, these programs, you know, I don't think you can ever prepare for acclimatizing your body to, to weather like we've seen this week. And, uh, you know, we don't typically get this type of weather. Um, I don't want to say typically, but you know, very rarely do we ever get it this warm, this humid. And there's one of the most important people carrying it out is those kids bringing water. Absolutely. And well, you know, for years, we always heard Lake Orion, it was almost a running joke. Yeah, they run 90 kids out there, but maybe 18 of them play. Well, you know what? Tonight, a lot of people are going to play football. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they should. And they should. And so, um, but you know, as, as I'm walking in tonight um, from a 92 degree a car, um, um, you know, as, as the Eagles came out from their locker room and every single kid had their own individual cooler that they were carrying too, yeah. right? In yep. addition to what's already be, being provided by the training staff. So, um, you know, you look down here on the, in the Lake Orient side, on, there's yeah, seven so different the Gatorade the coolers team down team there. Team and so Plus forth. the individual coolers down here on the right. Absolutely. Got to stay hydrated. First and 10. Inside handoff to Wellman. Comes up the middle for about five. It'll be second down. They've run that counter really well with, with Wellman. Get that well with Wellman. Yeah, very good. Trying to be, trying to be funny. I, I never made it on that cir circuit, so uh, I'll, I'll refrain. That'll be my one and only for tonight. Second down, Dorian Hill splits left. Wellman lines up on a slot right. Looks like Ray Payne comes in motion. Kyler on the carry. He is close to a first down. When, when you have success running up the middle like Lake Orion has with Roberson, all right, you've got the ability to pull and take it and keep it like Carson did that time. You sh if you saw the replay of it, there's two guys that went with Roberson on that yeah. fake and Carson was able to pull it out and get close to the first down. About the length of a football one. short. So third and about a foot. Oh. 
high snap. Kyler takes it, got the first down. I tell you what, that was a high snap. Kyler Carson did a nice job of bringing it in. But if you saw that play, there was not one white shirt penetration on this side of the 22. I'm sorry, not, not the 22. The 12, wherever they were lined up last. And uh, bottom line, there was no penetration. That surge of that green, that green machine, that green wall, if you will, resulted in that first down, even though Carson bobbled the ball from the high snap. We have an injury timeout. Number 51, Nick Honaker limps off for Eisenhower. This place is taken by Luke Anyal, number seven. You gotta watch even even in mid, not even the mid second quarter, you've also gotta watch for cramping as well. Yes. It's first down and goal to go near the eight. So first and goal from the eight. Handoff, Roberson up the middle, inside the five. Roberson tripped up by Byrne. Rotating both Roberson and Lardell in Second on a fairly consistent basis in that single back position. Number 26, Raymond Payne set this up on a wing left. Wellman on a wing right. Nardell is the running back. He gets a handoff up the middle and he's in. Touchdown Lake Orion Dragons, Naz Lardell. And that was power right there. Absolutely. Again, take advantage of what you do well. In the backfield, following those big horses up front, lead him into the end zone. Nothing fancy. Reverse handoff. Good vision by Lardell. Look at the look at the surge. Look, yeah. look at all the white that jerseys offensive line. into the end zone. Um, celebrate, put six on the board for the Dragons. Ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is good by Jake Lee. 7.01 to go here in the second quarter. Dragons take a 13 to seven lead. Go mobile with ONTV anytime. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube on your mobile devices. Connect with ONTV to see what's happening in our studio, see upcoming events, and watch ONTV programs in high definition on demand. Orion Neighborhood Television, working to bring Lake Orion to the world. And the world is getting a show tonight. The newly formed Lake Orion offense is moving and talking with offensive coordinator Mike Powell, I said, when did it seem to click? You know, you're putting all this stuff in to summer camp, meetings. When did it click? And he said, probably last week at the spring. He said, it just seemed to, everything fell into place. But we've seen tonight, all that being said, we you still know. got some procedure issues. Well, thank you. And that'll happen. As a coach, you don't want it to happen, though, do you? No. <laughs> Jake Lee kicks off. Short kick. Free caught at the 15 by Cody Raymond. They're calling it the 16. Verizon Howard will take over first and 10. I know it typically in a situation like that, that little pooch kick, Roberson did it as well when Ike just kicked off. But... Uh, that time, you know, Cody Raymond caught that ball. He fair, fair caught it. If you look at it, 
I know they don't have that return or that call set up. He probably could have gained at least 10 yards had he been aware, but maybe that's what they're taught to do. Just Let's just catch it and get it from where we get it because we don't have that return set up. It's, it's one of those things that if, you know, number one, you're an up guy. You're not used to catching kickoffs. So it's better to fair, call the fair catch and make it, or if you don't make it, fall on it. New quarterback, Luke Eno. Oh, is that number one? Eight knives, I'm sorry. One looked like a seven. He's up the middle and he's got a first down. Yep, he was in at the quarterback running a little wildcat. Yeah, the, the flow, they followed Sikowski from left to right and, and Ives was able to keep it and take it up the middle. Jake McCoy. Same thing right here. There he goes again. Trapped in the backfield, breaks loose. Finally taken down. James Patterson. Drops him for a two yard loss. It's second and calling it second and 11. Yeah, Aiden Ives is their senior, senior uh, does everything for them. You know, wide receiver, defensive back, and obviously now he's playing some quarterback. So they uh, wanted to get in a different rhythm or they just, at least wanted to show Lake Orion a different look. And he's, uh, I was gonna say under center, but he's in the shotgun right now, right? I snap. Hand off up the middle to number 27, Zalkowski. It'll be third down and about six. Zolkowski is one of those uh, another players that, that Coach uh, Smith from Mike talked about as being one of their strengths. Another one of their senior players does a nice job. Third and long. Screen. Screen set up, complete and brought down short was Cardmore. Cardmore. Andy Horton on the stop for the Dragons. And that brings up a fourth down and five. Scoreboard, yeah, fourth and five. Number seven, Luke Eno into punt. Stephen Brown deep for the Dragons. Good defensive series by the Dragons. Very good. Snap. Kick, low line Heads drive. Up. Ball is touched. Picked up by Brown. And for a low kick, he got a decent return out of it. Probably 50, 20 yards on the return. I thought that ball was low, so low that it hit Andrew Horton on the head, and and, yeah. um, and then Brown was able to scoop it up. You know what? We have a flag down. We may have an illegal touch. -up. We have a personal foul. Andre, blindside block. 15 yard penalty. Blindside block on the dragon. So that'll back him up 15. And that's just the kind of thing you're running down there and someone turns and you just run into it. Yeah, them. and you know, it's, it's, it's all about, again, just like tonight is with the, with the hydration and, and making sure enough water. It, it, the rule is put in there for player health and safety. Yes. And uh, when it's all said and done, that obviously is the most important thing to come out of each and every game. The kids stay healthy, but have fun and compete while playing. So the Dragons take over first and 10 from their own 38. Lardell's the running back. Car right down. Got pressure. Intended for C.J. Witt, and that was just to get rid of it because he had huge pressure coming up the middle from number 59, Ethan Rakowski. Tell you what, I, they, they might go back to it a little bit later on, but I was watching uh, Stephen Brown from a slot position just run a vertical route, and I'm thinking, 
oh my God, he comes off the ball quick and fast. And at some point in time, they're going to have to be looking at that type of play to get we'll that see ball. That. We'll see that. Thank I'm you. sure we will. <laughs> Second and 10. Lardell is the back alongside Carson. Handed off this side to C.J. Witt. He gets about five, and it'll be third down. Did you notice who one of your lead blockers was there? Kyler Carson. Kyler Carson, number five. Yeah, your quarterback. And you, you, you see it right here. Hand off to Lardell, hands back to Witt, and guess who's leading for you? Number five. Didn't want to get a hand on anybody, Did, but... <laughs> didn't block anyone, but he was out there. So third and four, they're calling it. Kyler throws first down. Complete to C.J. Witt. That's a first down for the Dragons. We've seen it a couple times tonight. The most interesting way to go in motion, backpedal like that. You know, I, 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 don't, I, I, don't, I don't know that I could backpedal like that and not find myself going towards the line of scrimmage. Something you got to practice, right? It is. <laughs> and you're right. It's something you don't see. Roberson up the middle for eight. Roberson. Quickly. They're going to give him seven. It'll be second down. He hits the hole so fast. Yeah, he, he does. And that, again, that's what you want to do in this type of offense with the misdirection. You want the misdirection to take your uh, the defense's eyes elsewhere so you'll be able to run it up the middle uh, on these dives and these traps and these belly plays. Second and three. Roberson again gets maybe a yard. It was tripped up at the line. So yeah. it'll be third down and two. Yeah, Ferraro once again, number 48 from his linebacker position. He's been in on more than a half a dozen tackles so far tonight. Isaiah Marv splits wide left. Wellman and Dorian Hill are the wings. And timeout by Eisenhower. There is a whistle on the field. Yuka Eisenhower calls. That's their second. Dragons still have two. Hey, be sure to turn into tune into replays of your favorite games right here on Orion Neighborhood Television. Tune in Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m and Saturdays at 1 p.m. for the most current games in our lineup. Games are also play, replayed throughout the week, so check out our program guide on our webpage at orionontv.org for replay times that best fit your viewing schedule. Also, visit our YouTube link for games on demand. That's at www.orionontv. Dot org. And while we have a break in the action, we mentioned earlier the tur turnover on the coaching staff. Two individuals I'd like to recognize for years of service here, Brad Fisher and Mike Heath. Guys, I wish you all the best. Thank you for your commitment and leave making the program a better place. Good coaches and good friends. Third and two. Robeson up the middle, a little problem on the handoff, and Kyler fell down. 
but the result's the same, first down Dragons. Yeah, it's really fortunate that ball doesn't end up on the ground because you know, as Roberson's getting the ball from Carson, it was one of those situations where Carson's deciding, do I give it, do I keep it, do I give it, do I keep it? And uh, you know, almost like Roberson pulled Carson with him, and that's the reason he fell down. But first down nonetheless, a big one too. Once, once the ball's in the gut, let go. That Ike defender was there too, so it's like he doesn't want to give give it up and let that ball end up on the ground. First and ten for the Dragons. Roberson's the back. Stephen Brown on a wing up. And we're going to have a procedure called the Eisenhower lineman jumped. Yeah, because because tight end, tight end Joey Debrinkett went in motion from left to right, and as a result, the right defensive end for the e Eagles moved, and at the same time, then Daniel Babcock, left tackle, moved. Yeah. So I would think it's gonna be against the Eagles. So they'll sort it out. And you're right. The first time of many, you're right. Thank you, thank you. So it's first down and five. Oh, third, first time of many? Oh, the last time of many. Or last time, I don't know. <laughs> first time of many. Thank you, thank you. We'll see about that. First and five. Robeson stays in the running back position. Kyler on the keeper. Up near the first down. He's going to be about a yard short. Number 21, Ryan Polisi, on the stop for Eisenhower from his linebacker position. Matter of fact, he came all the way across. He's playing a left outside linebacker, cut in all the way to make the tackle. Kyler, back to pass, got pressure, looks, throws, tipped, incomplete. And Kyler got nailed as he let it go. Yeah, he had pressure, and he also threw that ball up where you shouldn't throw it, in the middle of the field with three three white defenders yeah. around him. So Lake Orion was very, very fortunate that that ball was just tipped and knocked. It was tipped up in the air, but no one was there to obviously pick it off. 50.2 seconds to go here in the second quarter. If you're Lake Orion, you got to get points out of this drive going into halftime. Yes. We don't know what the halftime festivities will be. The marching band is not here tonight. They have been practicing. Jam up at the line, number 36, Devin Steele. He was at the ball carrier. He was in the there. Backfield. He was there. From his nose tackle position. Made initial contact, but it was Roberson ultimately who wanted it more, and he actually had Carson able to push him along and aid him a little bit to get to that first, first down mark. Lake Orion's going to take a timeout with 42.1 seconds to go. And how Steele didn't end up with the football, I'll never know, because he, he met Kyler in the backfield. Now, isn't that, isn't, we're not watching, I'm watching the monitor, I'm not watching the field, but isn't that a good sight to see? That S is. Student the, section. To see the student section packed. Beach night tonight, that's the theme. Where's your beach gear? You didn't, you didn't bring the, the, the grass skirt and the, and the, and the, the goggles and the, the snorkel? Well, you know what? We were on camera for, pre, for, for pregame. You really don't want to subject the viewers <laughs> to that. <laughs> Oh, that's right. You spent your time all at the beach all summer long, didn't you? Oh, I could only dream. Yeah. Well, you know, some of the golf courses I play, you're not far wrong. That's true. That. That's true. Double wide, double wing setup. Empty backfield for Kyler. Got pressure. Throws complete to Wellman. Trying to get out of bounds, and he does. Nice job by Jack Wellman. Cut across, made the catch, and then it was just 
two things, get the first down, get out of bounds. Was he out of bounds or was it the first down? We're gonna find out right now. Let's see if, he's, if they start the clock. Cause that's what Lake Orient coaches are asking here on the sideline. He was out of bounds, good. He was. Twins left, single wide right. Kyler throws, got a receiver. C.J. Witt down to the one. 27.7 seconds left. There's the crossing route again, same flow. Wellman comes from right to left and then Witt comes from left to right on the cross. And he finds, he, he puts his right foot in the ground and takes it north to the end zone. And close to the end zone, this is the touchdown. Kyler though. runs it in, touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. Kyler Carson has got the mastery of this offense down. He has played very well tonight. It may not show in passing stats, but this offense is not gonna throw the ball a lot. So Jake Lee on for the extra point. Connor McCartan is the holder. Connor's the backup quarterback, and Coach Blackstock spoke very highly of him. And we have a flag. So they'll back it up five and retry the point. Yeah, when I spoke to Coach Blackstock about Kyler Carson, he went out of his way to praise uh, Connor McCartan. He said he has had a good grasp for the offense. Ball's down, kick is up. And the kick is good, 23.4 seconds. Lake Orion 20, Utica Eisenhower seven. Hey, did you know that ONTV has its very own internet radio station? You can create your own podcast or radio show or sign up to become a DJ. For more information on the radio station, give us a call at 248-393-1060. Talking with Sammy Terramina tonight. Uh, he is going to do his podcast uh, next week, and he's invited me to be part of his podcast. Look out. Everything about look out the world. Look out, look out world, right? Look out world. Sammy does an excellent job Oh, I know, job I know. It. But now you're going to be part of it. So what is that going to, how is that going to do the? Well, you know, I just play. It, <laughs> it's like working with you. You just play second fiddle to the real <laughs> yeah, stars. Right. Well, that's good. That's exciting. That's good. Just promoting what high school sports is all about, right? I mean, that's, that's great. That's great Sammy to hear. Sammy does his work. He goes to media day. He assembles all the media packets. This one's short and going to get returned and taken down at the 30 yard line by number 24, James Patterson. Was number two, Micah Dickerson. And also, Max Firestein, number 33, also in on the stop. So we'll set the Dragon defense, of course, led by Joey Thede, who was a second team All-State as a junior. Aiden Ives back in there for his second series at quarterback. And they're just gonna take a knee and run the clock out. I, I wonder if something happened to Preston Crum that he hasn't been back in the last two series. I will try to find out from their, their people up here in the booth. We've played a half, the Lake Orion Dragons lead the Utica Eisenhower Eagles 20 to seven. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football. We'll be right back.
Have you ever thought of producing your own podcast? ONTV offers the facilities, equipment, and training to help you get your own podcast off the ground. Learn how to record your show and get it out to the world. Cost is $25 per person, which gives you access to ONTV's podcast room and equipment. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Just ready to start the second half, the Lake Orion Dragons lead the Utica Eisenhower Eagles 20 to seven. I'm Doug Corliss, Chris Frischings to my right, and Megan Keyes sitting there working the board on my left. Our halftime was sponsored by Malasha's Palace Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, located at 3800 South Lapeer Road in Lake Orion. Malasha's Palace has been serving Lake Orion's automotive needs since the 1950s. Give them a call at 248-393-2222 or stop by at 3800 South Lapeer Road in Lake Orion. The third quarter is underwritten by Paul's Carpet Shine. The privately owned and operated company provides residential and cleaning services for the Orion area. For more information, give them a call at 248-568-9264 or visit their website at paulscarpetshine.com. Paul's Carpet Shine is also owned and operated by former Dragon linebacker, Paul Lemming. Chris, an exciting first half. You've got the halftime stats. Yeah, a couple of them here. You know, it's obviously 20 to 7. After each team in their first drive, you know, ended up punting, uh, Lake Orion finally got on the board first with 3.31 to go in the first quarter. A Stephen Brown six yard touchdown to put them up 6 0, missed extra point. Ike came batting back in the ensuing drive, and uh, Preston Crum, a six yard touchdown pass to Hayden Bills. Uh, and with 19.6 to go in the first quarter, with the extra point good, Ike goes up 7-6. Lake Orion comes back on the next drive, 7-0-1 in the second quarter. Nas Lardell, a six-yard touchdown run to put Lake Orion up 13-7. Lake Orion scored their their third court, uh, court uh, excuse me, third touchdown of the of the half at 23.4 seconds left to go in the second quarter. A one-yard touchdown run by Kyler Carson, extra point good. Puts Lake Orion up 20 to seven at half. 195 yards rushing for Lake Orion, 36 in the air, 231 yards total offense for the Dragons here in the first half. So after that first possession, jitters for both sides of the field, that Lake Orion in particular, that offense really took charge. Uh, three out of the four scores, or three out of the four drives, excuse me, resulted in touchdowns for the Dragons. Pretty good percentages. Yeah, and we mentioned that you know in the beginning it looked a little little shaky offensively, but boy, it sure came around in the late in the first quarter and all through the second. They're playing some little different music here in Lake Orion, a little ACDC. Yeah. I mean, but you know what? You come out here on game night. You know, now the lights are on, but even even before we come out here, the team comes out, the college, the fight song plays, the college fight song plays. There just is not a better atmosphere on Friday night than being out here at Lake Orion. We've talked about it before. We look out the uh, press box. We got the best view in Oakland County here. And you've been to a few games in your career, haven't you? Been to a few here. Yeah. You know, when I started here in 1985, the field, of course, was grass. The <laughs> scoreboard was in the south end of the end zone. The, they had the old uh, uh, luminescent lights that the end zones and you know, p parts of the field were in the dark. Did I also hear that the home team was on the far side as well? No, you know what? We've always been on okay. this side. Okay. 
when they built the concession stand on the far side, the thought was that the home team would be on the far side. And Coach Bell put the kibosh to that. Real quick, he said, I'm not looking up in the sun. <laughs> Short kick taken by the Eagles up over to 30, do brought down by Jack Wellman at the 35. It'll be first and 10 Eisenhower. And I just saw, and number nine, Chase Whitaker was in on the tackle also. So first and 10, we'll see who comes out at quarterback. And it is going to be Aiden Ives at quarterback. Handoff going around on the right side, slips a tackle by Joey Feed, but does not get by Ethan Strand, tackles him for a one yard loss. It'll be second down. Solkowski got so wide and, and so deep, it, it, Strand ended up missing the tackle, uh, but when it's all said and done, I'm sorry, Thede ended up missing the tackle in the backfield, but when it's all said and done, it allowed the defensive, uh, defense for Lake Orion to come and make a play, and uh, a one-yard loss. We'll, we'll take it if you're a Dragon fan. Coach Rick Powell has such an aggressive defensive plan. Stephen Brown in at right cornerback for the Dragons. Um, uh, Ives on the scramble doesn't quite make it back to the line of scrimmage has another two yard loss and it'll be third down and 13 I don't know how Ives even made it out of that pressure Lake Orion did a good job of containing and somehow he slithered his way through and yeah he lost yardage on the play but he could have lost a lot more so third and 14 they're calling it twins to the left single wide right receiver set up on a wing right single back in the backfield high snap looks throws caught Ives pass complete to Ethan Barker and oh, they're calling it incomplete. Thrown out of bounds. So it'll be fourth down. Stephen Brown drops back for the Dragons. It's, I'll tell you what, Doug, it's hard to see numbers right now where it's kind of the sun's yeah, set. set and I'm trying to see who the punter is. And we, Lake Orion's gonna call timeout. They may have had 12 on the field because Caleb Jones came off the field at a sprint. Just not fast enough. That's the reason they had to call the timeout. Yeah. So thanks to Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Broadcasting, you can watch Lake Orion High School sports live online all year. We've got a full schedule of varsity football, volleyball, and more this fall, plus concerts and ceremonies. It costs less than $11 per month to watch sporting events, and half of that money goes back to the Lake Orion High School program. Be sure to designate Lake Orion High School when you set up your account. Get started at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. ONTV thanks our student crews for their hard work and dedication to bring Dragon Sports to the world. Okay. You know, that's, that's, that's why it's great, you know, especially last year, the ability to stream games and be able to watch games uh, when people couldn't attend. Um, you know, we've come a long way in this world in terms of being able to cover high school sports, and this is just a great part of being oh able to be a part of this, uh, this experience. High snap, brought down, punts away, hits, takes an Eisenhower roll inside the 30 and will be downed at the 28-yard line. And Joey Tysick down in the truck just informed us 
that Preston Crum, the starting quarterback, is on crutches on the sideline. So that's so, a you know, situation where you, you take one of your playmakers out from the wide receiver slash running back position and you put him in a quarterback, you know, and, and that, 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 especially early on, you probably haven't had a lot of reps that way. Right. You know, and so it, it puts a, another onus or another emphasis on the execution of that offense for the Eagles. Kyler from the gun. Hands off. Stephen Brown around the left side. He's got open field and makes it into Eisenhower territory at the 40. You're right, he, Chris, he got around that corner and just turned on the Jets. And again, the Oakland County 100 meter champion and the state finalist in the 102 you know, 100 meter at, this, at state. And so um, speed galore, and uh, you saw it right there. Very patient around the corner, but once he got the corner, bam, he's gone. Yeah. First and 10 for the Dragons at the Eisenhower 40. Kyler from the gun. Hands off Wellman, cutting it inside. He's brought down after a gain of two. It'll be second and eight. And this whole offense is predicated on speed. Speed and misdirection and trying to get the advantage on one side of the field or the other. You know, get, get a matchup situation, not only with personnel, but also with numbers. If you can do that, more times than not, you're going to win, win, you, win that play. So second and eight, balls spotted on the 38-yard line. 8.50 to go here in the third. Dragons up by 13. Double wing and a wide receiver left. Kyler up the middle. Gets a couple more. It'll be third down and six. And Chris, after you held Eisenhower on their first offensive series, it's really nice to be able to go down the field and score. Absolutely. It, it would be a great start to this second half for the Dragons. And, you know, They've scored three possessions in a row. Can they make it a fourth? So third and six. Robeson's the running back. Roberson, he's got a first down over the 30-yard line. Tell you what, I was watching the play clock when they called that play. Kyler Carson clapped his hands at about two seconds, and they just barely got that play off before the 40-second play clock went off. But that's the nice thing about 40, the, the, the play clocks being on site. The, 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 the offense can run it to their advantage. You know, right. they can signal in the plays from the sideline. They can call the play at their leisure. They can work the clock. And uh, it's a nice advantage a lot of high schools don't have. Well, before, we always told him to watch the back judge because he kept the play clock, and he would have his, have his hand up and then do vertical motions with his hand for the last five. Hand off. Around the right side, helmet comes off, so they'll stop that play Robeson. right now. Robeson on the carry. He's got to come out and sit out a play. Hard to tell from here, and again, I'm only up in the box, but it looked like if, if Roberson would have cut up and inside, there was a big gap inside right about the top of the numbers at about the 30-yard line there. He saw something else that uh, I didn't see from up here, but again, that's why he's playing and carrying the football. I'm just, you know. Well, I'm sure they'll look at that tomorrow morning during film study, and they'll see that, and that's just a teaching point. Absolutely. You know, he's a sophomore running back who does a nice job, and it just teach and learn as, 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 as the game goes on, yet you learn by watching film and you're going to get better that way. Nick Eaton on the carry and he carries it for a first down over the 20 yard line. We haven't called his number yet, but when he comes in, he's producing. Well, 
And here's Eaton's first carry. Again, you got to be aware of the motion coming from left to right. Nice cut back by Eaton. Up the middle, gets the first down. How many, how many individuals have touched the ball tonight? Oh, my goodness. We'll have to try to do a count sometime. Wellman breaks a tackle, cuts it up inside, down to the 25. Good job of cutting it up and breaking a tackle. What you've seen so far in these drives, in these scoring drives, in the first scoring drive started at their minus 35. Second scoring drive started at the minus 21, meaning our, our own 21. Third scoring drive started at the minus 38. Very slow, very deliberate, very well executed. They're not, so far it has not been a quick strike offense. Uh, it's a lot of times what we used to see with exactly. Lake Orion, a Lake Orion offense. We're not seeing that tonight. And I would guess, I mean, certainly the offense is gonna develop as the season goes on, but, but uh, this methodical type, uh, we're gonna grind you, we're gonna wear you down. That's so far as what's working well for the Dragons. And the Dragons are gonna pick up five more on the offside penalty against Eisner. And look, don't, don't, don't get me wrong, we've had speed in the past. We, you know, you coached Brian Allison, who was an all-state receiver. We, we've had a lot of speed, but we've never had inside speed like we're showing, being like we're seeing tonight. When you, you, you play that offense slow and deliberate, guess what? You, you as a defense focus so much in between the tackles and at some point in time, you're gonna be able to go up top. You're gonna be able to work yep. on crossing routes and b balls downfield, plays downfield. So um, that's what's, Ring. I was gonna say, that's what's fun about being an offensive coordinator, to be able to, to, to play the game against the defense you're going up against each and every week. Raymond Payne on the run gets a couple. It'll be third down and three from the 11. We have not seen Naz Lardell here in the second half. One wide out, two wings. Wellman in motion. Wellman trying to break a tackle and does. Close to and has a first down for the Dragons. Tell you what, what an effort by Jack Wellman. How many, how many tackles, yeah, how many tackles has he uh, gotten out of? How many, how many times has he made people miss on that defense over there? He's done a nice job. He's done it a number of times, twice for sure, uh, in this drive alone. He's trying to get a rest, but they're telling him, hey, stay in there for another play. <laughs> Oftentimes, you can be rewarded that way, can't you? Yeah. First and goal from the seven. And we got a flag. Whistle for the play, there is a flag. Probably a procedure penalty. We have a little shift from the offense. Legal shift from the referee Calvin Terhar. That'll back him up five, and they'll repeat first down. 3.39 to go here in the third. Dragons looking to get one more. And Jack Wellman finally gets his rest. Wearing those pads as hot and humid as it, you can lose a lot of body weight oh at a night like this. Hate to tell you this, but two guys up in the booth tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and another one, and it's probably going to be another illegal shift. What a snap, we have delay again. Pop it. Delay. So that'll back him up another five. I thought Joey Debrinkit, he went across the formation and set up again on the left side. So now it's first and goal from the 17. Roberson still the running back. They got twins left. 
and Dorian Hill on a wing right. And now a timeout taken by the Dragons. They're trying to burn the clock, I'm sure, although after a penalty, the clock doesn't start. It's taking a long time to get the place set up. And, and as PA announcer Roger Smith just brings up, the Dragons will be on the road the next two weeks. They go to North Farmington next week. And the week after that, they will be at Southfield A&T. Remember, you can watch online and I saw some of the North Farmington staff here tonight watching the game, scouting the team for next week. Yeah. That's just it. I mean, the OAA Red, which Lake Orion plays in, and the MAC Red, which Utica Eisenhower plays in. I mean, you don't get much better in terms of conferences statewide. You uh, do not. You know, it's really fun to, to be able to compete at this level if you're, if you're any one of these kids, any one of these coaches. There have been state finalists all over the place. Screen tried to get set up, incomplete, and it'll be second and 17. Took about four seconds off the clock. I couldn't tell if that was deflected or not, or just Robert, Robertson just dropped it, but that's the second time they've tried to run screen and second time that uh, it's uh, ended up on the ground. A quarterback running this offense is not going to overwhelm you with passing stats, but it's how he runs the offense. And tonight, Kyler Carson has done an excellent job. Well, when you, when you get 195 yards on the ground in the first half, you probably, you probably don't need to put it ball, the ball in the air, do you? Until now. Kyler looks, throws, incomplete. And again, he threw it into triple coverage we got a penalty in the in the, so I don't know if he was hit as he threw it. Might be roughing the passer. Nope. Holding offense. The situation. Dan Babcock. That ball that ball ended up short. So I don't know if, if it was a matter of it looked like Kyler couldn't step into that throw because he had somebody in his face. Very well could have been that hold right there. So on Babcock. that makes it a second down and 35 from the 35. Second and goal from the 35. Second and goal from the 35. <laughs> How many times have you called that in your, from here in your career? Not many. <laughs> Kyler, back. Rolling, looks, throws. Got Stephen Brown, breaks a couple tackles, gets up to the 30. It'll be a gain of six. And bring up third down and goal. They're calling it at the 28. Yeah, Dominic Ferraro, once again, linebacker for the Eagles, in on the play. He kind of came up gimping a little bit. Looks like he's cramping, but he's... He's a tough player, he wants to stay in there. Big third down play for both sides. But if you're the Eagles, you gotta get off the field right now. Yeah. Defensively. Kyler looks, hit as he throws, caught by C.J. Wett inside the 20. So, you have a 30-yard field goal, which it looks like they're going to attempt. The other option would be to go for it and just try to get it inside the five and make them come the length of the field. But they're going to go for the field goal. It'll be a 37-yard attempt. By Jake Lee. Kick is up. And the kick is good from 37 yards. Jake Lee from 37. It's now Lake Orion 23. 
and Eisenhower seven. What a kick. The third quarter of today's game is underwritten by Paul's Carpet Shine. Your the privately owned and operated company provides residential and cleaning services for the Orion area. For more information, give them a call at 248-568-9264 or visit their website at paulscarpetshine.com. Got a handful of scores from around the OAA. Troy 14, Auburn Hills Avondale zero. The third quarter, Royal Oak 14, Ferndale 12 in the third. Troy Athens 51, Pontiac 0 at halftime. Rochester 28, Lance Cruz North 2 in the third quarter. You know what? I'm glad to see Troy have an opening day win. Kick taken on the 2. Up to the 36, 37 yard line. Comes. Trying to see who brought. I'm not really that slow reading this roster, but it's in blue with white printing <laughs> and it's darkened. <laughs> so first and 10 for the Eagles in the 28 yard line. Twins left, single wide right. Single back in the backfield. And Ives continues at quarterback. And he's going to get trapped and brought down. James Patterson. Yep, Ethan Strand in there as well. Ethan Strand's Strand. down. Getting up slowly. I think he's cramping too. Yep. Yep, he's cramping. They'll get some fluids in them. It's inevitable when these guys are playing so fast, so hard, and so yeah. physical. When they stretch the leg out like they're doing, that's a cramp. And look, I'm sure these players stayed to the hydration regimen, but it's still hot and you still sweat it out of your body and you've got to keep replenishing. Well, like you said, four days in advance or so, but you got to do it the day, you know, the day of, during the game, obviously, and you got to do it afterwards, too. Yeah. And, uh, and when you get a cramp, you think you've been shot in the leg. Yep, yep. <laughs> you just can't get any relief. And he's down there holding his head. And I'll tell you what, Ethan, I can sympathize with you. Been there, gone through that. So if you're the if you're the Eagles, you, know, you scored on your second drive when Preston Crum, the sophomore quarterback, was in there. But ever since then, punt, end of the half, and punt. And uh, really haven't put anything, you haven't, you haven't uh, put the ball on Lake Orion territory at all, except for that scoring drive, which is the second scoring, second drive of the, day of the game. Well, I think you can also see that with a 13, with now a 16-point uh, lead, Coach Powell's going to turn this defense loose. Judah, 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 Kinney. Judah Kinney. Another Kinney coming through, and this time he makes a big play. Tackle for loss. It is third and 14 as we count down the last 10 seconds of the third quarter. They're not going to get this play off. That's the end of the third quarter. The score of the Lake Orion Dragons, 23. The Utica Eisenhower Eagles, 7. 
Tonight's game is a copyrighted presentation of Lake Orion High School Dragons Broadcasting Program and Orion Neighborhood Television. Last school year, the LOHS Broadcast Program was awarded the title of Best Overall Program in the Country. We brought you over 80 live sporting events and we plan to match that again this year. Plus, you can catch our award-winning daily live newscast, LOAM. Tune in at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. So we enter the fourth with the Dragons with a 16-point lead. And I don't think that Coach Blackstock could have scripted this any better. Time of possession heavily in the Dragons' favor. Total yards heavily in the Dragons' favor. And I think this is what he was looking for out of his team this year. Absolutely. Good, nice ball control offense. Haven't turned the ball over. A few penalties that you'll want to clean up, obviously, but uh, they haven't been such that they, they've really hurt the team on either side of the ball. From the gun, pressure. Caught, complete, big gain, first down. And Stephen Brown runs him out of bounds at the 49. That was caught by number 27, Dan Stelskowski, who we've called his name quite a bit tonight. Boy, off! I, I could have, the Lake Orion coaches were, were, were yelling at the official on the sideline. It, it looked like the Eagles moved just prior to the snap, but obviously it wasn't called big play for the Eagles. So first and 10 from their own 49. Pressure. Toss up the middle and sack. Judah Kinney again. Yeah. yeah, look at Evan Rawlings finally, number 30 there. Contain, contain, contain. Look at that, one, two, three guys in and around to make the play. That, that, when you're a defensive coordinator like Rick Powell is, this is where it's fun. Yeah. You can you can let let go, you can let, let the kids go. play and, and rack the football. Number 30, Evan Rawlings also in on that stop. So second and 19. I snap again. Throw out and brought down. Andrew Horton, first one there, follow up by C.J. Witt. Horton did a great job because Ethan Barker puts out a really good stiff arm and was able to break that stiff arm in half and end up making the, the tackle. Well done by Andrew Horton. Eric Pay also came over from his far safety, or far cornerback spot and got in on the play. So it's third and 20. Here's the cross again. Picked off. Coming back the other way. Number 16, Ethan Strand, recovered from his cramps, picked it off and brought it down inside the 10. Roland, Roland, Patrick Roland. Pat Roland, okay. Yeah. Here's the crossing. Rosokowski comes across right out of the backfield and the ball's thrown high and Patrick Rowland sitting right there, picks it off, tucking that ball high and tight, does a great job, great blocking downfield by Chris Hargett. All right, gets the Lake Orion the ball at the 10 yard line, great way. Best field position of the night for the Dragons to start a drive. And before the game, they have a turnover chain and he's just slipping it on right now. It sits on a, on a pole and there it is. Handoff up the middle. Penalty Chief marker. McCoy. And it's coming back. So that'll back him up five. It'll be first and 16. And I think we have another player cramping down there. Is that right? It looks like number 64, Dan Babcock. 
who's played a whale of a game tonight. Absolutely. So it's the procedure penalties, it's the formation stuff. I mean, obviously there's going to be more things that they see on tape. We've still got 9.55 to go here in the fourth quarter, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that you can, uh, obviously, asi aside from the score, there's a lot of things you can look at as being very, very positive for this first game against a very quality Utica Eisenhower team. Absolutely. While we have a break in the action, our fourth quarter is underwritten by Legacy 925. Located at 925 North Lapeer Road in Oxford, Legacy 925 is your one-stop shop for family fun, providing dining, music, entertainment, go-karts, trampolines, and so much more. To find out more, visit their website, thelegacy925.com. As we mentioned, the Dragons go on the road to play North Farmington next week, and that ought to be a very interesting matchup. North Farmington was always in contention up to, what, the regional finals last year? They still have a lot of the old Harrison coaching staff. John Harrington's their offensive coordinator. So should be a good game next week. One of those games which Lake Orion doesn't have an opportunity to play North Farmington very often, you know? No. And so go to a new place, new atmosphere for, for this Dragon team and it should be a fun one. We played at the old Harrison when Harrison was in Division One. We had some good Harrison Lake Orion battles in those days. So it'll be a good game next week. So first and 15 after the penalty. Going up, brought down is Raymond Payne. That'll bring up second and 12. Ethan Strand in on one of the wing positions. High, high snap. Handoff, number 25, Jake McCoy, down inside the five. 9.15 to go. Dragons looking to put it away here on opening night. It'll be third and four as we pass the nine minute mark. Tyler Carson's gone all the way tonight. Handoff brought down was Jake McCoy. It'll be fourth down. And they're going to try another field goal. Out comes Jake Lee. Daniel Babcock's coming back in after his cramping episode. Ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 7.59 to go. The Dragons increase their lead to 26 to seven. Larry Buss and the crew at Jets Pizza, located at 1091 South Lapeer Road, have been a proud supporter of Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Athletics since 2009. Jets supplies catering for cast and crew. Thank you, Larry, for your continued support. Give them a call and, hey, it's kind of late for dinner, but you can always have that late night snack at 248 814 
seven, five, five, nine. Doug, I, ha I haven't eaten yet, so it's not too late for dinner. Okay. I can't, I don't know about you, I don't know about the kids, but I can't eat before a game. I, I, don't, I just, I don't know if it's nerves or it's just, I just something I can't do. Yeah, that's right. You never made it for those great mustacholi dinners uh, down there. Very few times, right. <laughs> very few. Mustacholi and salad. It was a pregame staple. I wonder if it still is. I don't know. I'll have to check uh, check with Coach Flatstock, see if they're still doing the mustard. Uh, that's not part of my pregame analysis anymore. So <laughs> I try to I try to get an insight on each of the teams, but as far as the pregame meal, I don't know anymore. Kick bouncing around and goes out of bounds at the 13 yard line. That's the second time tonight, and that's something that's got to be corrected. Eisenhower will start out start out first and ten at the 35 and it's very simple if you're going to kick it low kick it down the middle of the field you're not going to go for the corner of the end zone on a kickoff you got 10 other guys to run down with you on the coverage so first and 10 Twins, single back in the backfield. Back to throw, looks, throwing, going deep. Caught. What a catch by number four, Ethan Barker. That's highlight real stuff that, there. That's big time. That's a big time throw. It's a big time catch. Barker just extends his right arm. He got, beat the corner on the post route. Did a great job of reaching out grabbing that front tip of the ball with his right hand, bringing it into his body as he rolled down. Beautiful catch, big first down for the Eagles. So first and 10 from the Dragon 25. Throw to the corner of the end zone, broken up by Stephen Brown. Good job getting back and batting the pass away. And that's what the Ike's got to do. They, they got to work on getting back in this game very quick, being down by 19 points. Pass was intended for number 19, Jackson DeMasi. And great play by Stephen Brown to break, to break it up. So that's second and 10, under 7.30 to go here in the game. Aiden Ives continues at quarterback, and we got a stoppage in play. Lake Orion's going to take a timeout. That's their third and final. It is. Make sure to tune into replays of your favorite games right here on ONTV. Tune in Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m. and Saturdays at 1 p.m. for the most current games in our lineup. Games are also replayed throughout the week, so don't forget to check our program guide on our webpage at orionontv.org for replay times that best fit your viewing schedule. Also make sure to visit YouTube, our link for games on demand, orionontv.org. 7-12 to go in the game. Dragons holding a comfortable 26-7 lead, but Chris, we've seen so many times, no lead is safe. Eisenhower breaks him out. Two wide outs, twins, twins right, single wide left. Our receiver splits out to a slot left. Single back in the backfield. Ives goes down. Jake McCoy, second sack of the night, I believe. Nice job by McCoy to fight off that block and stay and keep keep Ives in, in his in his eyesight, be able to wrap him up and make the sack. Third down and 13. 
clock stays running. It's third and 13 with 6.40 to go. Eyes from the pistol. Drops, got being chased. He picked up one block. Yeah, he got one block, which was called. They're going to call that. And Joey Thede is staying on the ground. I don't know if he's can't. We have a late flag. And I think it's holding on Eisenhower. And on a third and 13, and you didn't make it back to the corner. One's a live ball, and one's a dead ball. They can both be assessed. First was a block in the back by the offense from the flag, 10 yard penalty. Okay, that's the first one. Second penalty. After the play is over, we have a dead ball personal foul laying it out of bounds on the defense. It's a 15 yard penalty. Okay, so the result of it is that it's going to be fourth down and 10. Or no, they'll repeat third down. It'll be, yeah, it'll be third down and 10 now. And that's, you know, I know it's hot, but you still got to keep your wits about you. So twins right, twins left. Ives back, looks, throws. Almost picked off yep. by Horton. So, the, so that'll bring up fourth and 10. I did not see their kicker in pregame. But it would be a They got to put they got to put touchdowns yeah, on the board it'd be being a down. 42 yard. And they got to put point, points on the board as you said. Ives back. Rolling right. He's Gonna tucking tuck it and run. And it'll be Dragon's ball on downs. Ethan, Pat Roland ran him out of bounds. So it'll be Dragon's ball first and 10 on the 20 yard line. A good defensive stand by the Dragons. So now the Dragons have one mission, eat up the clock. And they've been doing a good job of it all night long. Roberson is the running back. Dorian Hill split left. Roberson up the middle. Gets about five. Give him six. It'll be second down. He doesn't like to go down. He runs the no. ball nice, nice, nicely between the tackles there. Doesn't like to go down. He's had a good game tonight. But what it, you know, what I was gonna say, what is this all set up by though? That front five up there. You know, Absolutely. That we've talked about since the since the pregame. Yeah, and that's something we want to bring up to, to Coach Blackstock in post game. So second and three, they're gonna let as much time go off that clock as they can. It's down to 10 on the play clock. First down and more. Open field, Roberson to the 40. Watch him run. Touchdown Lake Orion Dragons, Billy Roberson. 73 yards.
Look and run up the middle. Nice cut. Bam, right there. One guy to beat. Right there. There's the guy to beat. Yes. Puts the ball on the outside arm, and then it's a track meet. And guess what? Nice block right there by number 10. Look who else Dorian, is down there blocking. Dorian Hill. His quarterback. He wanted to go down and celebrate. Yeah. We saw him block earlier. He didn't want to go block. <laughs> he wanted to go celebrate, and that's what he did. I would be celebrating, too, after a run like that. Leon for the extra point. Ball spotted. Kick up. And good. 5.04 to go. The Dragons increase the lead to 33 to 7. Wow. We said early in the early today that this offense is predicated on speed, and you just saw it there. It's speed once he got into the open field, but it's the hole that that offensive line created that allowed him to utilize his speed to get to the outside and score from 73 yards. And that's where you, you know, you're know you gonna watch the film if you're the offensive staff and you're gonna say, you know, we've done, we did some really good things here tonight. And, and that's just something to be able to build on. And you start building confidence in these kids, showcasing themselves tonight the way they have. Um, you know, a, a snowball rolls downhill, and if you can continue to build that snowball confidence, uh, boy, oh boy, it can be uh, very exciting uh, moving forward for the Dragons offensively this season. And let's not forget, the, the Dragons defense has been phenomenal as well tonight. Exactly. Seven, seven possessions the Eagles have had, one score. Broken tackles here. Cuts up to the 40, and put down at the 39. Cardamone on the return, and he got, he just jammed up all the defenders, broke it inside, and took off up the sideline, or up the hash mark. So it's first, first and 10 the from the 44. 39. I'm sorry, the 44. Four forty-eight to go. Double wide, double slot look. Hold. Good quarterback in there. It's gotta be a hold there. And he was greeted. Boy. By Judah Kinney again. I tell you what, Alec Fisher with left defensive end spots coming around the edge against the right tackle. Watch 54 right here. He's getting held like oh you wouldn't goodness. believe. Torn down. Oh my goodness. They didn't make the call, but Lake Orion got the sack. Miguel Vasquez in there on the, on the play. A nine yard loss. Second and 19. Handoff up the middle, stuff. Maybe a half yard gain. Judah Kinney again. Stop by Kinney at the 36. Max Firestein also in on the play. If you're down to your third string quarterback, if you're the Eagles, Matthew Elias, and uh, you know it's a matter of. You, do you get him reps to try to get back in the game, or do you just get him reps to try to get out of here and, and, and keep everyone you, healthy? I think you get him reps to, to give him the feeling of play under fire. Let him get hit a couple times. You know, let's face it, for most of the past five weeks, with the exception of a four-way scrimmage, these yeah. guys have just been hitting each other. Hitting each other, you're right, yeah. Absolutely. That's a, you know, we always look look forward to scrimmages to hit someone who's dressed up. I tell you what, we got to give credit once again to the Lake Orion defense as well. How fast, how quick, I mean, they, how many plays have they made in the Eagles' backfield tonight? Many. Yes. Had to wait for the punter to come on. Fourth and 15. Stephen Brown deep for the Dragons. Takes a hop. He called a fair catch. It is going to be down on the 
twenty three yard line with two thirty three to go dragons thirty three utica eisenhower seven what a way to open the season and we have mosquitoes in the booth here When I was coaching Lake Orion, and the, the wide receivers, I always, I always go to Coach Blackstock, who was coaching the defensive backs. I said, get your gnats off, I called the defensive backs gnats, <laughs> because they were they did such a good job of covering our wide receivers in practice. I said, get off me, get off, yeah. get off our wide receivers. He didn't like that when I called him that. And uh, off the right side. For about three. Connor McCartan in, in at quarterback for the for the Dragons. This last drive. What I assume will be the last drive. Harkin, I believe, is in at quarterback. It's good to get him some reps, too. Oh, hit him in the face mask. Ball's on the ground. Dead ball, and it looks like Eagles take over. They did. He was. He looked away from the center, and the center snapped the ball, hit him right in the face mask. And that'll come. That's his first snap at the varsity level. There will be more. And I didn't see if they had a backup center in there. I'm assuming they did. So that's just that's just new center quarterback. So Matt Elias is in at quarterback for the Eagles. Christian Johnson. Christian Ball. Johnson up the middle for a couple. By Ken Jimmy. They're going to give him a gain of one. And we're under 130 to go. And Eisenhower doesn't seem to be in any particular hurry. Double wide, double slot look. Quarterback Receiving keeper, Elias. Elias, and he's brought down after a gain of two. It'll be third and six, and we're under 45 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner in tonight's 50-50. Thank you, everybody, for taking part. And the rest of the program will see you again in three weeks. Third down and six. Handoff up the middle. That stuff to number 33, Christian Johnson. Johnson runs into the Dragons, number 54, Alec Fisher. And that should do it. The Eagles are walking back to their bench. The Dragons want to, they're saying, come on out, let's play some more. <laughs> so the Dragons with a very impressive opening night win defeat the Eisenhower Eagles by the score of 33 to seven. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football. We'll be right back. Use the trash cans under the concourse instead of leaving garbage on the bleachers. Thank you for joining us here this evening at Lake Orion High School. We thank our press box crew, including the boss of the box, Melissa McSweeney, timekeepers Brian Winter and Tim Curtis. Down on the field after the Lake Orion Dragons defeat the Utica Eisenhower Eagles 33 to 7. Chris. 
domination on both sides of the ball tonight. Offense, defense uh, did a great job. I mean, obviously, well, we don't have the final stats right now, but 195 rushing yards after the first half. Obviously, Roberson had a 73-yard touchdown run uh, there in the second half. Um, defense played fast. They were physical. They were aggressive. Um, you know, six out of uh, six out of eight possessions for Lake Orion offense resulted in points. One out of nine possessions for Eisenhower resulted in points. That was the difference in the game. And we brought it up before that offensive line for being together for four or five weeks was fantastic. Beautiful. Uh, did a great job, and the holes were there. And how many people touched the ball tonight? Uh, it was really great to see that that Lake Orion, the new Lake Orion offense, in effect tonight, and it was very effective. And on the other side of the ball, Coach Powell just let it loose, especially in the second half. Absolutely, and you can when you get a score like that. And you you could see they lost their quarterback early on, and uh, they had to go to a, a second quarterback who was their, one of their playmakers. And when it's all said and done, the defense took advantage of that. Coach Blackstock joins us. Coach, congratulations. Hey, thank you. Thank Good you. win. We got, we got a short cord here. We got but yeah. a short cord. I yeah. got a couple guys that are, that are willing to come in here too, the, the Powells. You Sound told good. me in pregame, it's what you wanted to see out of your team. Are you happy with what you saw tonight? Yeah, you know, it's it, we're going to smile that we won, right? Because these, these wins are way too hard to get to not enjoy. I've learned that over the 24 years that we need to enjoy them when we get them. But at the same time, you know, I think we saw a lot of things that we can still get better at. You know, some things to clean up, you know, a typical first game stuff, some, uh, some misalignments offensively, you know, some, some miscommunication things, and, and we'll get better at those. Like, like Coach Bell has always said, uh, how good can you get between week one and week two? The great teams make the big jump between one and two, and that's going to be our focus after we smile about this one for about 24 to 36 hours. How to be up. Fun review on to, uh, tomorrow morning. Yeah, it, it always is a little bit more fun after this, but you know we'll we'll find enough to work on. Everybody healthy? Yeah, for the most part, I think so. You know, some guys cramping up a lot with the humidity, um, but overall, I think we're real healthy. Okay, Coach, enjoy it. Coach Powell, come on in here. Yes, sir. Congratulations you on so your much. win. Thank you so much. It looked like the first couple series, maybe your offense was a little shaky but they sure got it together. You and I talked about it in pregame. They got it together and turned it on. Yeah, we got some weapons. If you notice, we played probably seven or eight different running backs, so that's a great problem to have, and they all did a great job, and our offensive line is very, very good, and uh, we're excited about the future. Chris? Yeah, we got, we got Rick, uh, your son, on the other, so you guys must have some great conversations at home or at the dinner table about offense versus defense. I mean, you probably do that, don't you? No, we don't do that anymore. You don't? No, no. <laughs> we just, uh, we work together very well, and it's like a dream come true to be able to work with him. Rick, in the second half, it looks like you just took all the reins off your defense and let them go out and have fun. That's what we talk about. We always talk about the less they think, the faster they play. Um, and we want just to let them loose. And, and really important for us to have 11 hats to the football at all times, and that's what we did. Who stood out for you tonight? You're the usual guys, Joey Thede. And, uh, but who else stood out for you tonight? I mean, it was a team effort all, all in all. We had 11 guys, like I said, always to the ball. Um, our line, we had four or five linebackers rotating in, a couple D linemen, secondary wise, we rotated a couple corners. So guys really stepped up. And uh, I mean, CJ Witt really came, never came off the field. He did a heck of a job. Yeah. Both of you with the heat tonight, trying to keep everybody hydrated. Could you always get your personnel packages in who you wanted? Uh, sometimes it was a challenge, as you saw in the second half. We sometimes we kind of didn't do so well getting our packages and our kids in there because we thought he was ready, but he wasn't ready. So you're getting somebody else, and we got a couple delay of the games, which wasn't good. But at the end of the day, it's still a W, and we're smiling. Rick, you had a couple guys cramp up. How's everybody doing tonight? Uh, doing well. That's what we talked about, that next man up mentality. And if someone goes down, we got guys to pick them up and play hard. North Farmington, got some legacy there. Good luck next week. You, appreciate Congratulations it. Appreciate on the win. Thank you, thank you guys for all you do. Go. Appreciate it. Thank you. Nice job, buddy. Good to see you. Sorry, I didn't know we were <laughs> So that's it from the field. The Dragons start out 1-0. and They'll be back in two weeks to take on Oxford. Chris, any last thoughts? No, it was a fun game to watch uh, from both sides of the football, and it just, I'll be honest with you, it's just fun to be back 
here at Dragon Stadium to experience this. I mean, you look out here, yeah, it's after a win, but look at all the people back, all congregating. That's what I talked about at the very beginning, the sense of community, the sense of togetherness. That's a feeling I've always gotten here when I've been here at Lake Orion, and it's great to see what's happening here tonight, especially after a big opening day win. We'll be back in two weeks. Until then, thank you for watching tonight. For our producer, director, Joey Tysick, Joe Johnson running the sideline camera, my broadcast partner, Chris Fritching. I'm Doug Corliss. Good night, everyone.